Hello, I'm Adrian, and today I have the first part of a two-part look at Mizaloo by Dick Dale. And I do occasionally like to look at classics in my videos, and this certainly qualifies as a guitar classic. And this video has actually been in the works for a while, simply because I think it's quite a difficult piece to play. And although I've vaguely known how to play this for quite a while, I did want to learn it properly and I needed to practice it so I can do some kind of justice to it today. And of course I can't play it exactly like Dick Dale plays it, but I'm certainly feeling more confident with it now than I was a few weeks ago. Now Mizaloo was a single from 1962 and with this piece and with some of his other early pieces, Dick Dale basically invented surf music and surf music guitar sounds. And I think many people, myself included, were first introduced to this piece through the film Pulp Fiction, where it was included in the soundtrack. And uh, that was responsible for, I think, a resurgence of interest in Dick Dale. I think before that he was uh, more of a kind of cult figure. But now I think uh, most people would recognise this piece, even if they didn't know who it was by. So there's quite a lot to discuss here and rather than rush through it and try and cram everything into one video what I thought I'd do is split it into two parts. In this part I'm going to be discussing the main riff, that main melody, I'm going to talk a little bit about the music theory involved and also about some of the techniques involved in Mizaloo, specifically the tremolo picking technique. And then in part two I'm going to discuss the other riffs in the piece. I'm going to talk about the trumpet solo and how you might go about playing that on the guitar and I also want to talk a little bit about surf gear and surf sounds. So let's get started. Let's begin by discussing the opening riff then and I think one of the most striking things about Mizaloo is the actual melody which to western musical ears is quite an exotic sound and it starts to make more sense when you realise that this isn't an original Dick Dale composition, it's actually based on a folk tune and a folk melody that I think is of Greek or Arabic origins and it's a feature of Dick Dale's music and of surf music generally I think that they kind of import these exotic sounds and then blend them with more rock and roll influences and that's quite a big part of the surf sound. So let's discuss this melody and I think if you strip away the, the technique and the, the frenzied tremolo picking you've got a melody which goes something like this. We've got... <laughs> pretty unusual melody and it seems to be based on quite an unusual scale. Uh, I remember clearly I was teaching this song to a private student of mine a few years back and uh, the, the lesson was going pretty well and then my student asked me so what scale is Dick Dale using when he's playing Mizaloo? And I went, um, well, of course, it's the uh, it's the fr Phrygian, um, it's it's the the harmonic. Uh, I, actually, I don't know. Um, I had to <laughs> admit admit defeat there um, because it's not a, a familiar scale to me or, or really to Western music. So um, after the lesson, I kind of did my research and discovered that the the actual scale being used here is something called. The double harmonic scale it's actually got a few different names but double harmonic is one of the the names that used also referred to as the gypsy major scale or the arabic scale and one of the interesting features about this scale that you don't really find in more common western scales is the big interval leap between some of the notes in this scale so what we're dealing with here is this if we're playing the e double harmonic scale we start with an open low e string and then we've got an F and then we're jumping up to a G sharp and then A, B, C, another jump up to a D sharp and then we're back to E again. So the interesting feature about this scale as I said is, is those big interval skips. We've actually got these kind of three fret jumps between the F and the G sharp and also between the C and the D sharp and in, in theoretical terms those are described as augmented seconds and that's what gives Mizaloo its character. So that's the Mizaloo scale and at first I thought it was the Phrygian dominant scale and it is very closely related to the Phrygian dominant mode which is a more familiar kind of western scale that is used uh, quite a lot in jazz music and uh, classical music but th there is a difference and that's the, the difference in the seventh note of the scale so the, the Phrygian dominant mode would be 
would have a D, but the, the Miserlou scale here has a D sharp. So it's a, it's a one note difference, but in terms of the overall feeling and, and sound of that scale, it's quite a significant difference. So first thing to do, I think, is just to familiarize yourself with that series of notes, with that scale. Now let's get to a close up and I'll take you through exactly what Dick Dale does with this scale. So Miserlou is all about tremolo picking. It's a tremolo picking masterclass, I think, this particular piece. Now tremolo picking is just where you're playing the same note multiple times with pretty quick down up strokes of the pick. And really the whole piece is based on this technique. And if you're new to tremolo picking, you might like to check out a couple of fantastic videos I did recently where I take an in-depth look at the technique and I give you some exercises where you can work on your tremolo picking technique and uh, speed. So definitely recommend checking those out if uh, you've never done tremolo picking before. So Miserlou is based on a 16th note tremolo picking pattern and 16th notes are where you're dividing each beat up into four subdivisions. So it would sound something like this if we're just going to tremolo pick some 16th notes on the low E string. We've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So to start with, I think I'd recommend just getting used to that 16th note tremolo picked feeling. It is played very fast in Miserlou, so you might need to work your way up to that kind of tempo. I think it's about 175 or 180 BPM. So maybe get the metronome out and just gradually work your way up to the, the full tempo. So we've got these 16th notes happening and one thing to bear in mind is that it's not completely consistent 16th notes throughout. We've got some 8th notes in there, we've got some quarter notes, some tied notes, so I don't think you need to be too precise or too accurate with this. The most important thing with this piece is just to get the attitude and the energy and the attack rather than being overly precise. I mean yes try and get the melody and, and the notes correct but don't overthink this because I think it would be impossible to play otherwise if you try and reproduce exactly what Dick Dale is doing I think it's impossible and it's the kind of piece that he would never play exactly the same way twice I don't think. Another important thing to bear in mind is how you're accenting some of these 16th notes. It's not just a continuous stream of 16th notes all played at exactly the same volume. Some of those notes are going to pop out and are played with accents and I think the main accent pattern that I'm hearing in this piece is something like this. So I'm playing beat one and then the and of two just more strongly. I'm picking harder and I'm giving it a bit of an accent so it's one, two and three and four and one, two and three. Again, that's not completely consistent, but I think that's the predominant accent pattern that you're hearing in this piece. And that's a really important element of this. Otherwise, it's just a, a, a bland series of 16th notes. It's important to get that light and shade and those accents happening in there. So the piece kicks off with a couple of bars of tremolo picked low E notes. And then we start climbing up the neck and the melody is really just going straight up that Miserlou scale that we discussed earlier. So we've got straight up the scale and then we're coming back down C and B. And I think the best approach to playing this is just to think about that melody and the rhythm of that melody and then just add in the tremolo picking and that kind of takes care of itself if you're just moving your moving your picking hand up and down then slot in the melody and it will sound like this so I'm not thinking about exactly how many times I'm striking each of those notes I'm just thinking about the melody and the rhythm of the melody. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Then just adding in that tremolo picking. And uh, just one sort of 
further detail here, I think there's just a, an open E string in there towards the end of that riff. So after you've played that C, got an open E and then we're hanging on that B note. Then just sliding down and then the whole thing repeats again. Once you land on that B, we're staying on that B note for a couple of bars and we're falling into that accent pattern one more time. So one and two and three and four and one. So that's the first couple of phrases. Then we've got a little variation on the melody, which is something like this. We've got... And again, I'm just bearing that melody in mind and then moving this picking hand in 16th nose. So the melody is a little bit busier here. We've got these quick alternation between the C and the B there. And then the same thing here between the B and the A. Another open E string there. And then we're hanging on the G sharp. So that the coordination is slightly more difficult when the notes are, are changing quickly. So that's again something you might like to build up from a slower tempo using the metronome. And then the next phrase goes like this. If I just break it down to the melody, we've got... And then if I add in the tremolo picking... So we've just got the, the B and the A here. Down to the G sharp. We're going back and forth between the A and the G sharp and then for the last three notes we're just taking a break from the tremolo picking we just got F G sharp E. Let me just put all of that first section together for you reasonably slowly. If you've got that together then the next bit is going to be easy because we're simply playing exactly the same thing but we're moving it onto the high E string. So we're actually starting off with a kind of a little bit of a slide down the neck from around about the 12th fret. Uh, actually playing that as a double stop so I'm playing on the high E and the B strings just sliding down with some tremolo picking and then as I said I'm just playing exactly the same thing on the high E string, so we play that ascending melody twice. And then the, the second melody. So th there might be a few tiny variations when he plays it on the high E as opposed to how he plays it on the low E but 
Um, to all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same thing. Um, technically, it might feel a little bit different, though, because you're going to be changing the angle of your picking hand and the angle of your pick. So you might find it easier playing on the low E string than the high E string or vice versa. So it just might take a, a bit of work just to adjust your technique and feel to make it feel natural on both of those strings. So that's the basic idea. We've got the main melody played on the low E string, same thing on the high E string, then we're on into the trumpet solo. So that's it for this first instalment. I suggest you get working on your tremolo picking, learn that melody on the low E and on the high E string, then next week we can get into the trumpet solo and we can look at the other riffs in this piece. Full music and tab for this are going to be up on my Patreon page along with the backing track, so check that out if you feel like it. And I shall see you for part two next week. Bye bye.